Good evening, Say by Grace members. God bless you. God keep you. God fill you. God instill you. God guide you. God lead you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I know it's been a while. Been really busy. Uh, we uploaded and sent off two uh, sermons to the radio ministry, which will be starting September 1st at 545 on 770 a.m. So for all of you that have been donating, uh, God bless you. God multiply your blessing a hundredfold. It's because of you that we are on the radio. Um, I'm so humbly gl glad that God found something inside of me to work with to allow this to take place. I mean, the ministry is growing. We're going back into Juvenile Hall starting next week. And um, I'm still waiting on finding out about doing Sunday services at Juvenile Hall in um, San Mateo County. Um, we'll be in, in San Quentin in November. So God is good. God is moving. It's the, the power and the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ that is making a move in this, in this world. We, we just got to stay faithful to the cause. So today's message I actually wanted to do for the radio, but I think I just want to come back to where it all started. You know, I mean, I was talking to a pastor today at a men's fellowship mentor breakfast that we have every month. And he was talking about coming to, you know, work in the church again, coming to fellowship and build the body of Christ. And, you know, we used to do um, church together before. You know, uh, people are reaching out for, you know, God's grace and his His anointing that is working through me, because we all know it ain't me. And, you know, God is opening doors and leading me down into other avenues, which I'm very, very grateful for. And so, Lord, before we move in the power and the might of the Lord Jesus Christ this evening, through the power and anointing that flows out of the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Let your your sons and your daughters, my brothers and sisters, be filled to the brim this evening. Let it just overflow that whoever is in the room with them, who's ever in the car driving with them, who's ever watching Facebook with them, whoever's listening to the YouTube message, that they will be touched and they will be delivered and they will be healed and they will find sanctification inside salvation through Christ Jesus himself. In the name of Jesus, Lord, use me to present your word on this page this evening to anoint, to uplift, to encourage the body of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. The title of this message is Walk Worthy of the Calling, which is Christ Jesus in you. Now, I want you to, I was reading this this morning before I went out the door, and God had me add some other things to this. We are called and instructed to live godly, holy, and sanctified lives, full of glory and obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to get this concept. We've been called. We've been chosen. We've been sanctified to live a holy, a godly, and a sanctified life. That is what shows us different than the world. That we're godly, that we're holy, and that we're sanctified. So let me give you a breakdown. Holiness is living the way that the Bible is telling us. Godliness is us operating in the fruits and the gifts and the manifestation of God's presence. And sanctification is us being separated from everybody else to be able to live holy and godly lives through, through, not without, but in conjunction, in collaboration with the Holy Ghost who is leading us. Let's not forget about the Holy Ghost now. The Holy Ghost is the last part of the uh, divine nature of the three in one 
that is left inside of us to get us back to heaven. That in itself is 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 unexplainable. That there's this Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit living in us, teaching us, guiding us, leading us to walk holy, to be like Christ. Man, I'm telling you, when you get this message, I mean, just walk with me. Just walk with me. Second Peter chapter 1. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to do all these things. Second Peter 1 verse 3. According as his divine power hath given us unto, unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Now it's letting you know that God sent the power of the Holy Ghost to give us everything to live and everything to be godly. So he's given us the power, the, the, the wisdom, the direction, the guidance, the unction, and he's guiding us to walk into this holiness and this godliness. We're not doing it on our own because we couldn't do it on our own, but the Holy Ghost came down and said, I'm going to get right up inside these folks, and if they allow me, I will guide them because he's like a dove. You got to understand, God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, they will not force us to do nothing. They will unction us. They will guide us. They will do their best to persuade us to go in this direction, but we have the choice. I was sharing this with the sister last night. We have a choice to follow the movement of the Spirit. We have that choice. Or we could choose not to follow and suffer the consequences, but we play a part. It's a partnership, rather you believe it or not, because God gave us free will. Second Corinthians. Now I want you to really grab hold of this. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but we all who are spiritual who are holy who are sanctified but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of God, get that, are changed into the same image. The Holy Spirit is changing us into the very image of God. Check this out. I was tripping this morning when I read this. I'm telling you, God's always adding to his word. And so this morning when I was reading it, it was so, so powerful. Now check this out. Let's get let's, let's get real deep to understand how much God wants us to be like Jesus. Verse 18. But we all with open face beholding the glory, the, beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. Now let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our own likeness. Get, get this. God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. Well, it says right here in Corinthians that we are being changed into the same image of the very God, the very creation that God has done for us. He has made us to be this person of Jesus Christ, this very image. He is saying that the very thing he started, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. And this Holy Spirit that's left in us is teaching us and guiding us how to be the image of Jesus Christ. It ain't even you. <laughs> it's the Holy Ghost in you, driving you, leading you down that pathway to be just like Jesus. 
Wait till you see how powerful it is that you are supposed to be the very image, the very nature, the very hands and feet, the very essence of Jesus. Okay, um, changed by the Spirit of the Lord. How does this happen? How do we become this? How do we become this image? How do we become this godly, holy, sanctified person? I am glad that you asked that question. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, as you're reading this Bible, as you're reading this Bible, as you're reading the Bible, as you're reading godly books, as you're in the Word, as you're in prayer, as you're in church, as you're in Bible study, your mind is being renewed by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit is important all this into you. He's teaching you how to think in a different way. Now, if you think about the movie, The Transformers, they went from this truck into something else, right? Well, that's what's happening to us. We are being transformed into the very image of Jesus Christ to walk in the very likeness of true godliness and to be holy sanctified people because of the Holy Spirit that is in us that's teaching us the word he is so important brothers and sisters get that now when your mind is renewed this is what you get to see from your mind now being like Christ so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. As your mind is being transformed, as you're holy, as you're godly, as you're sanctified, as the spirit in you are moving, as he is changing you into the image of God, you now can find out what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Get this. How do you know how, how do you know this? Because you now think like Christ and can hear the Father through the word. As all this is taking place, you're becoming more like Christ. You're you're getting the mind of Christ in you and you can hear the Father as Jesus did through the word of God because the Holy Spirit and you have connected on a different level as you're submitting to him to become this new creation. Here we go. Does yours and mine's walk, talk, thoughts and actions in our life reflect Jesus Christ? You got to take some time, my brothers and sisters, and ask yourself, when no one's watching, when you're at home by yourself, when you're on the telephone, are you being Christ-like? Are you walking like Christ? Are you talking like Christ? Are you thinking like Christ? Are you acting like Christ even when the door is closed? Keep in mind, a big part of becoming this, glor gl this godly, holy, sanctified person Walking in the Spirit has a lot to do with chastening. Now, it's deep when I was reading this this morning because, get this, this is what was revealed to me. There is the breaking of one's will to want to do the will of the Father. This takes chastening. Jesus said in Hebrews chapter 5, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. It wasn't that Christ wasn't already obedient. Remember, he wasn't an image and an example for us to follow. So he learned obedience through the things he suffered. Because once somebody constantly keeps getting chastened and punished for the same thing, after a while you got to learn, like, I ain't doing this no more. But that's not what Christ was saying. He was trying to get us to understand that chastening is actually good. Chastening isn't punishment. Chastening is a discipline by correction. 
that just came to me right now. Discipline by correction. Hebrews 10, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10. For they, for they verily, he's talking about earthly people. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. You know your parents, man, this is going to be, this is going to hurt you more than this. It's going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. It's like, come on, for real? Like, this ain't going to hurt you as much as it's going to hurt me. But that's what he's saying. That was for their own pleasure, their own purpose. But God says, but he, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So God's chastening was for our profit. You know, a profit is like when you make some extra cash and you make a profit, you bought something for a hundred bucks and you sold it for 200 bucks, you made a hundred dollar profit. God is saying, as I'm chastening you through your godliness, your holiness, your sanctification and your submission to me, there's a profit of this for you because now you're going to be a partaker of God's holiness. So this chastening that we're getting is to make us holy. Um, Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed into, here we go again, the image of his son. How am I becoming the image of Jesus? Because my chastening that's profitable for me is making me be more holy. If I'm becoming more holy, I'm becoming more godly. If I'm becoming more godly, I am now truly being separated for the calling of God's life to be made in the image of Jesus, to walk and talk and act and think just like Jesus. Come on now, get with this. The Holy Ghost is doing all this through you. Your job is to be submissive. Your job is to follow. Your job is to say, I got this, God. I'm going to walk with you no matter what it's like, no matter how it feels, because there's glory coming out of this. He said right there in, um, um, what was that? In, in, in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, from glory to glory, as you're growing in holiness and godliness and submission, as you're growing, you're growing from glory to glory. The Bible says from faith to faith and glory to glory means your faith went from this level to this level. Your glory is going from this level to this level because you're being obedient to the word of God. Man, come on now. Wow. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Get this. Here are some guidelines to learn a more deeper and committed life that others will be able to see, hear, and feel Jesus Christ when you come around, when I come around. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8. Now here's something. I broke all these down. And it's funny because the next three sections all have seven uh, statutes for a better choice of words. And besides this, giving all diligence adds to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Now get this, I went back into the concordance. I did some work. Virtue is, is good morals. So it reads this way. So add to your faith good morals, and to good morals, understanding. And to understanding, self-control. And to self-control, perseverance and endurance. And to perseverance and endurance, holiness. And to holiness, brotherly love. And to brotherly love, love. Now get this. You have holiness right up in there. Holiness, godliness, Good morals, 
self-control. He said, this is how you know you are walking in godliness and holiness and in sanctification. And because you're going to be walking with virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. That's how you're walking. And then it says, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, if I'm acting holy, being holy, being godly, in the sanctification, in the image of God, I'm going to be walking just like this and I'm going to be bearing good fruit. Check this out. In Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Now, here's the interesting thing. That's, that's nine fruits of the Spirit. That's how we're supposed to be walking at all times. At all times. Here's how you know if this is actually working for you. See, a lot of people, man, I feel with the Holy Ghost. Really? Man, I go to church. I read the Bible, man. I, I, I feed the hungry. I feed the poor. Man, you know, I, I mean, I, I, man, I, I'm, man, I'm set apart for God's good purpose. Really, brother and sister? So let me ask you this question then. Luke chapter 6, verse 27 to 31. But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smacks you on the, on the cheek, turn the other cheek, let him smack you there. And to him that takes away thy cloak, forbid him not to take away thy coat. If you're going to take your shirt, hey, here's the jacket that goes with the shirt. Give to every man that ask of thee and of him that steals from you, don't even ask for it back. And as you would that men should do to you, do unto them. If you are godly, if you are holy, if you are sanctified, if you are walking in the image of God, if you are walking in the fruits of the Spirit, if you are doing the knowledge, the virtue, the patience, the temperance, the godliness, the brotherly love, if you are doing all these things, then you could do all these other ones. Because you need all that I said before in order to do the rest of these. Because it takes love. You have to understand, in order to pray for your enemies and love those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you, you have to do all that in love. If you don't believe me that you got to do all that in love, well, let's make it clear right here. Though I speak, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or a ting and simple. And though I have the gifts of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. So if you are not doing uh, Luke chapter 6, 27 through 31 in love, it's for nothing. God ain't even looking at it. And the only way for you to do all these things in Luke 6 in love is you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. You have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to be holy. You have to be godly. You have to be sanctified. You have to be in the image of God. You have to walk in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and temperance in order to love your brothers and your enemies and those who hate you and those who talk about you and those who persecute you in order to do it. Why? Because Jesus did it. Jesus never said a word while he was going to the cross. Jesus knew what was going on. He didn't even curse Judas. 
He said, do what you got to do quickly. You have to understand, walk worthy of the calling which is Christ in you. We are to demonstrate this walk through our own lives, willingly, not forcefully, that God may show his love to others through us because he showed us love through somebody else when we was the unlovable. I can almost bet some of you are wondering how, how all this can be possible. It is, but one must find, first die to themselves and put on Christ. Put on Christ. Put on Christ. Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's step one. Step one is to let this mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's step two. Let this mind be in you is step one. Let your mind be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Step two. Step three. But put ye on the Lord Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Step four. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You have to understand something. If you have the mind of Christ, if your mind is being transformed into the mind of Christ, if you're putting on Christ, then you can walk in the Spirit. Because everything is holy. Everything is godly. Everything is sanctified, which has you walking in the image of Christ. Last but not least, I want you to grab this. I really do. Pastor Joseph from the church at 2525 Alamany Street in San Francisco, whose service starts at 9 o'clock. This anointed man of God, this pastor, has a very powerful word. And when he said this scripture to me the other day, it just touched my heart. 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is... So are we in this world. Get that. The he is Jesus. Because as Jesus is, so are we in this world. We have switched places with Jesus to walk in love, to walk in obedience, to give our life for somebody else, to share the gospel, to teach the gospel, to preach the gospel, to feed the hungry, to feed the homeless, to clothe, clothe the homeless. To give up what we have to give to somebody else. This is what God has called us to do. He has called us to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. You can't do that without the leading of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has work that he wants to do through you, in you, by you, and for you. Be submissive. Submit to God. Just, just think about it. You have this power, this anointing, God himself, through the Holy Spirit, that's living in you, doing his best to come out of you, and to walk in a place of love, and compassion, and humility, and forgiveness, to show the love of Christ through you to somebody else, so that somebody else can do that to somebody else. Just get that. God wants to use you. Not you use God. And Lord. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do through me Lord. Because without the Holy Ghost. There is no working. I already know the Bible made it clear in John chapter 15. Without Jesus we could do nothing. But with God. With Jesus, with the Holy Ghost, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. 
minister to the body of Christ that is listening to this message. Bring them to the knees of their heart to reach out to you, to really and truly be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ, into the image of Jesus Christ, who we are all called to be, Lord. Please continue to move in through, by, and for these brothers and sisters that those who are lost in this world may find salvation, may find love, may find forgiveness through the...